how do you get AI to recognize something like this? Traditionally, the answer is a lot of work. I mean, think of thousands of labeled images, bounding boxes, and weeks of training. But Meta's new AI model called SAM3 changes that. You don't train it, you don't label the data, you just type in a prompt like cup, and it tracks that object across your entire video. Okay, so what is actually happening here? Let's, let's talk about that first and then dive into a demo. SAM stands for Segment Anything Model. Now, this is version three of the model. I've played around specifically a lot with SAM2 and really loved it, but here are the three things that SAM3 does. One is obviously it detects objects with text prompts. Two is segment them. It segments all instances of the objects in the image or video, even if they appear later in the video. And three is track them across frames in video. Now the big difference is its open vocabulary. You can kind of think of it like most models are trained on fixed set categories. SAM3 isn't locked in. So you can use short text prompts like red balloon or corgi, preferably the dachshund, and it will find those objects even if they weren't part of the training set, which is really cool. So let's dive into it and do some demos and testing with it. Okay, so you can see here I am in the SAM playground and we are going to start by creating video cutouts. But before we do so, let's just check out what's going on here. So first let's go through some templates they have. They have featured templates, which showcase a bunch of different ones. Spotlight effect, I think is really interesting how they did it for the sporting event. I also really like the track anything ones, the object effects for track anything. This is so useful from not only a creative standpoint, but a practical standpoint. I mean, even thinking about things, how researchers could use this for tracking different samples. I mean, even with this simple mask or motion trails in this example, very, very cool. Then we have just for fun, which is obviously epic from bobblehead to clone squad and you know, everything in between. I also really like hide objects from blur faces, blur license plates to pixelate screens. I mean, there's been so many times where when I need to blur a bunch of different things, especially when it's people's faces when you're filming in public or license plates that it can take, maybe this is because, you know, I'm not a professional editor, but it takes so, so long to do so. And you don't know if you're actually doing it as accurate as it could be. Whereas with this, it will just fully blur everything, which is huge. And then also to everyday editing, which I have had a lot of fun with, especially with green screen objects. But to start with, let's go ahead and create video cutouts. Okay, so let's go ahead and segment a video. Now you can start with uploading your own video. For this example, I wanna start with a sample video to test out. So let's start here. And as you can see, you know, the first thing that comes to mind when looking at this is there's two of the individuals wearing a hat. So let's do this, let's just do hat to start with. We'll, we'll play around with here. So go here, enter, you can see it's finding the hats and it detects too. Amazing. So one thing I want to note, you can see here now it switches, like look how much it's moving. It's, as I mentioned, you know, sometimes you can see the object, the hat, and then other times in the video clip, it's out of focus or out of frame. And it still will then pick it up again, which is really interesting. Okay, so there are some other object effects I really want to play around with. So I chose a new video that I think will really showcase just how good these are. So let's take this video here with this table tennis player. I love table tennis, by the way. And let's try and track the table tennis ball. Let's go preview frame, searching for these balls. And they found two of them, which by the way, one of them was hidden in the corner on the left-hand side. So just as a side note, you can see it's pink there. Now let's go searching the entire video and see what happens. Okay, you can see, as I mentioned, it found two table tennis balls, at one in the corner and one that this lovely person is playing with. Okay, so let's select table tennis ball two and continue to effects. So let's go to add effect. And as you can see, there are three different categories, object, background, and camera. For this, let's start with the object because it's really fun to see it in motion. Let's go glow. Let's try out glow. First off, this ball is moving very quickly and the fact that it is tracked so well for uh, the glow, it's pretty impressive. Okay, let's try something else. Let's try trail. What would trail do? This is cool. This actually would be really cool too for other sporting events where you want to actually track where the object or this ball or what else do people play? A hockey puck, because I'm Canadian. Uh, anything that people are playing with uh, is, is going. It's a really cool way to keep the audience's attention. Very cool. There's so many other ones too, but for now, let's just start with these two. 
So through that demo, you can see what makes this so powerful is it's not just tracking objects that it already knows. This is what was called zero shot segmentation meaning the model doesn't need any additional training to recognize a new object. I mean, think about it. I never trained it on this specific mug, and yet it still found it. And then there's something called open vocabulary. We kind of referenced this earlier in the video. Now, most older version models were limited to a fixed list, things like cat, dog, people. SAM 3 isn't restricted like that. You can type in pretty much any short noun or noun adjective phrase like party balloon, green backpack, red apple, and it will detect and track those objects across the video. And it's really that flexibility is what makes it so different. You're not stuck inside a box of predefined categories. You can actually work with whatever objects matter most to you for your project, your business, whatever the case is. Let's go into another demo. Okay, so now we are back in SAM 3. For this one, I went to templates and I really wanna share with you about pixelating, specifically pixelating a face because I think these use cases are so, so good. And I mean, from pixelating a license plate to pixelating, say some, especially when you're a content creator, say your address on a package or an unboxing, it's so essential. So let's go ahead and for this, let's do a sample video. I wanna do something where they're moving around a lot, right? So I think soccer is a great example of this. You see there's a lot of different kids uh, moving around. So let's go apply template. So this is a predefined template that already exists. And as I mentioned, from pixelating to different fun backgrounds, you can see how quickly here they start pixelating. Okay, so it's searching for all the faces. What I really like too is it does the face does not have to be straight on. You can see here in this example, it's the, some of the kids' faces are going to the side, some are you just see glimpses of, and they're moving around a lot and it's continuously tracking it, which is really impressive. Once again, result, 10 out of 10, gotta say. Okay, I wanted to pull up one more video to play around with some other object effects. So this one I think is a really good use case because it's something we've all been through, whether it's filming in public or in an office setting, and you need to blur the screen. So, so what I did is pick an existing template, which is pixelate screens, as you can see here, but let's go ahead and add some more effects. So let's go add effect. Let's try background. Now, let's see here. No, you know what? This isn't a good example for background. Let's go back to home for a sec here. Let's try the spotlight effect because this I think is such a great, a brilliant example for how something like spotlight or really, you know, blurring the background or making it a bit different can really enhance the video. So let's go ahead. It's going through the video here. Now the forever debate, or maybe it's not even a debate. Is it soccer or football while well, this is loading? I mean, it's... It's football, that's legit the, the right answer, right? It's definitely football. Leave in the comments. <laughs> okay, here we go. So now that it has been applied, I mean, this is incredible. It's so cool because it really focuses in on the player. Everything else behind is dimmed. Let's go ahead and add another effect. Now let's go to, what if we do background and do blur background? No, I don't like that very much on this one. Let's try contour. Oh, that's kind of fun. Okay, that's just fun now. We're having fun now. But let's try adjust color and then take off the uh, contour. So I did double adjust color. No, this is better with just one. But you see how you can get so creative with this? Like I'm just having, that's cool too actually. That's actually very cool. Let's keep it as it. You can get so creative with this though. And I feel like for me, as I've mentioned, is it brings up new ideas for things to do with videos or different topics. And it's, it's just a great way to continue to be very creative. Okay, and when you think about what's really exciting about this, I mean, even in difficult situations, like when an object shrinks or gets hidden briefly, SAM 3 recovers really quickly once it's visible again. And I mean, this is such a big deal because the real world is, kind of messy in a way. Objects move, overlap, lighting changes. And SAM 3 shows it can handle those challenges far better than traditional computer vision approaches. Why does this actually matter then? I mean, the demos are really cool to go through, but 
let's create a big picture here. Well, one for creators, imagine editing a vlog and needing to blur a license plate or someone's face. Would you rather mask every frame manually? I mean, I've been there so many times, it's so painful. Or type in one word and let the AI handle it. Okay, let's talk about now for say science and research. Picture a biologist with hours and hours of underwater footage and they want to study one specific fish. Instead of labeling every frame, they can type in fish and sound three will track that. And when you start thinking of it from that perspective, you can see how big of a deal this is when it's used in these real world scenarios. Another one I like to think of, now this is just me, you know, hypothesizing for what's to come in the future, but think of AR glasses. Say you misplaced your key. What if you could just say something like, find keys and it will highlight them in the room or find glasses if you're me, because I lose them every single day. It's wild when you start thinking of these possibilities. And what's even crazier, I don't know, I get really excited about this, it's crazier that now you and I can start building with this with SAM3 and start thinking of different ideas to solve real world problems. I mean, I just listed three of them here. It's like there's so many business opportunities waiting that you can start building with this, or if you're a video editor using this, I mean, it's kind of limitless, it feels like. Okay, that is SAM3. I hope you enjoyed going through these demos and understanding some real world use cases with it as to what this, what the possibilities really are. I mean, it's really a glimpse into how computer vision is moving from research experiments, something we never used to even really think about or talk about, to now everyday tool. Drop your ideas down in the comments. Let's let's ideate together and, and figure out what is the craziest, coolest thing we can build with this. Oh, also I linked it down below so you can start building with it. I need to go fill this up with more coffee because it is empty and I, I do need more. Okay, I'll see you all soon.